This help video is on the manual cam checklist setup of the Cybex ECU range. What I want to go over this morning is showing you how this strategy works and why it's used. Now on engines where you're using the cam from a VBT uh, camshaft which has uh, a numerous amount of different size teeth on it, sometimes this is used obviously for also keying the phase of which cycle the engine is in. As you can see in front of us here we have on the crankshaft a 60 minus 2 trigger wheel um, and you can see this in the device view sync log. Once you've got the crank set up and uh, working correctly, if you go to device at the top here and then view sync log, you can open this window and actually see the current trace that's just been recorded from cranking. Now the important aspect here is obviously when you have gained uh, ignition timing to be correct and crank reference has been input correctly on the uh, Cybex ECU, so you've got the engine running in 360 mode. Enabling the 720 requires you to study this next graph. So you've got the camshaft teeth being shown on here, but at the at present time, if you haven't got any setup that's in for the camshaft in terms of whether you're triggering on the rising edge, the falling edge, etc. Now you can't just use a one point of reference because on the next cycle round, the same two for being a different place. So here you have to use the manual cam checklist setup to basically tell the ECU how many teeth are in each phase of the uh, engine. So on this particular engine you can actually do this by just using one check angle but you can set as many check angles as require and basically then input the amount of counts into each phase down under the manual cam checklist area. The thing to study for when looking at this graph um, or, or log in front of you is that you're looking for something that is different on the opposite phase and you can actually see that there's one cycle of the engine here one cycle of the engine here which is 0 to 360 and then obviously another cycle of the engine again which is 0 to 360 now the cam teeth down at the bottom here are actually different as you can see on each cycle so what we need to do is we actually need to tell the ECU about this difference so what you need to do is actually find a, a place in the actual uh, log where you can actually take as a kind of checklist entry point. So looking at the log here, we need to find a point where the actual teeth are separately different. Now, looking at this in the middle, you would actually think straight away, if you just split the graph straight down the middle, you can actually tell the ECU that there is obviously, say, three teeth on the one uh, cycle of the engine and only uh, one on the other cycle. And that's actually the correct thing that needs to be done here. Now, the difficult thing here is that one of the teeth is actually crossing over right in the section of the uh, middle of the, the, the two cycles. So what you actually need to do here is be careful on the edge which we trigger off. So the most sensible edge looking at this would be to go on the rising edge. Because basically, if we were to say at 300 degrees, which looking at the top scope here and then see the 270, in between the 0 and 270, that tooth is being is constantly on on the cam. So if we were to say, okay, look at the area of around about 330, so in the middle of the 270 and 360, what you want to do is actually say, do we want to be triggering off the rising or the falling edge? Well, if it's on the falling edge and we were to trigger from that point on, on the one cycle of the engine, you would actually have one, two, only two on that cycle, and then the next time round, when you come round, it would actually be one and two again. So it'd be two and two. The ECU will not know the difference there to which phase is which. So the key thing to do is obviously here to actually go on the rising edge. Now if you were to go on the rising edge and look at over here you'd have say it starts at 330 so it's just off the left of the actual graph. When looking at that you'd then trigger off the rising edge. So this point you'd have one count there, two count there, three count. Obviously then the check engine point, the, the, the natural point it checks at will be roughly in the middle of this uh, third tooth here. So the next time round it will then start checking from here again. There's no rising, even though that cam is dropping that's a falling edge, so it ignores that. So it will look just at the next rising one. So it comes round again. We've only got one there and by the time it gets back to 330 again there's no more. Now the key thing to remember here is if you are using this cam on a VVT engine and you are advancing the cam, you need to make sure that when you are advancing it, that the amount of advance you're adding doesn't bring this uh, far tooth over here closer to the actual latch point. And if that is the case, then you need to move the check angle 
uh, under manual cam jetless until uh, basically a degree which is out of the range of the VBT cam. Normally, if you're targeting more than, say, 35 degrees of advance on the intake, um, you, you, the actual camera is going to basically uh, stop anyway, uh, mechanically. So um, it's worth looking at. So now we've got the idea. So we know we want to basically have the latch point at 330 and we've got three in one phase and two in the other. So let's come out of this, press escape, and actually go down to the manual cam jet list. Now the first thing we'd be worth looking at is going to sensors, go to cam shaft position, cam phase, and actually make sure that the thresholds and triggers are right. Now it is a Hall effect sensor, so anything above three volts for the high trigger and one volt for the low. If you are using a unipolar input on the S6, uh, these are actually fixed uh, manually and you can't change those. They are fixed at 3.75 and 1.25. Same again for cranking because it is again a Hall effect and it doesn't change with uh, the speed of the engine. Next thing is look at the uh, signal trigger edge. Now at the moment it's set as falling so we want to actually set that as rising. So we set that as rising. We need to make sure the variable cam timing sensor inlet is set the same as the cam face in terms of trigger edge. Otherwise, when you go to program the ECU after changing this, it won't come online. These again are blue items, so anything you change as a blue item does require a program. So again, we make sure that the sensor type is set correctly and the trigger edge needs to be changed. So I'm going to set that to rising as well. It doesn't matter if the thresholds are different, but I generally tend to keep them the same because it uh, perhaps. In the, uh, in the future when we come back to like the final problem. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is uh, go down to uh, the uh, manual cam checklist and basically then set the manual cam checklist to be enabled. Number of checklist entries, well in this case we're just going to have one. Press escape on that. We need to obviously proceed, so I normally proceed and tag by pressing the T button and basically then it shows the calibrations which have been changed with a mark in yellow. So the check angle, based on the uh, information we just went through a minute ago, looking at the check, uh, this is the device uh, view sync log, we're going to put this at 330. Press escape, tag it again, so we know that these are the only maps that have changed. Then what we need to do is obviously it's difficult to actually know which phase the engine is in on the intake and exhaust cycle. You can actually pull the rocker cover off the engine and check it manually based on which uh, rotation of the crank you've got, but what you can get away with is uh, just by testing it and actually uh, setting the Enable 720 sync to uh, be around about say 50 RPM and then if it doesn't go to start because it's firing the wrong phase, um, generally you know that you're in the wrong phase and you need to switch it down here. So let's go for the first time and set this at 3 on this one and the manual counts on the other one to be 1. Okay, so they're blue items. You then need to go to device program. Obviously, I'm not online at the moment, so um, I'm not going to be able to do that, but you get the idea. The next key thing to remember is under starting that your minimum engine speed for 720 sync is set uh, lower now. Obviously, on this calibration, it's set to 7000 just to make sure that it actually gained 360 sync and at no chance it was going to try and go into 720. Any wrong calibration on that. Obviously, it's, it's not a nice one to the engine. So what we want to do is just keep it at a safe cranking speed to check if we're in the right phase or not. And if the engine starts and goes into 720 sync up here in the, the actual sync state, you're right. So the main thing to do here is obviously we want to lower that down now. Probably set that at one RPM. And then during cranking, if the engine starts up and runs as normal and goes into 720 sync, then we are we do know that we have the phase set right under the manual cam checklist. If it fires up and doesn't, then you need to come back down to engine configuration and swap the count in phase one to actually be one and the count in phase two to be three. Once you've done that, you'll probably find that maybe the fueling might have changed because you haven't got your 360 sync multiplier set correctly. When it's running in 360 sync uh, multi mode only, it will basically be running in a batched injection uh, Mode. So basically it actually be halving the amount of final injection because obviously it's been injected twice anyway. So you have a multiplier here and you need to adjust that to actually find that when it's in 720 or it's in 360 that your fueling is roughly the same. It's normally in the vicinity of about 0.38 to 0.45 um, depending if your battery dead time is right. If it's not correct then you do generally tend to find that changes um, so it's worth looking at that. But once you've got that set right, it's worth just double checking that map to ensure that it's uh, running right. If you do need to do any more complicated engines which do have uh, 
uh, more than say uh, the free teeth on each rotation or have different patterns per the uh, full 720 cycle then you can obviously add more checkpoints and, uh, and go, over the, go over the way that we described earlier to ensure that you've uh, got different amounts of counts in this phase. Hopefully this video has been helpful, I know it gets questioned a lot um, if you've got more uh, questions on it, then email support at cybex.co.uk. Thanks for your time.